Let's look at something you might be familiar with, a Ferris wheel. In other words, something that's in circular motion, but the plane of the circle is in the vertical orientation. So let's say we have a rider with a mass of 50 kilograms. Uh, the radius of the Ferris wheel is 15 meters, and the angular velocity is 3 revolutions per minute, or RPMs. I prefer to write it like this. It's easier to convert it. Uh, what would be the normal force on the rider at the top and the bottom of the ride? In other words, what would be the force of the seat pushing up on the rider? Well, first let's convert this from revolutions per minute to radians per second. You should know how to do this uh, very easily by now. If you're having trouble with it, you should practice. And so I have three revolutions per minute. I multiply by two pi radians over one revolution. Two pi radians equals one revolution, so I'm just multiplying by one. And so now I have radians per minute. Then I can multiply by one again. One minute equals 60 seconds. And so I get rid of the minutes. And now I'm left with radians per second, and I get 0.314. That looks familiar. You might try and figure out why it came out to be pi over 10. Well, let's draw a free body diagram of the rider at the top and figure out the normal force at the top first. And so we have the rider, and we have a normal force up and weight down. There's no forces really to speak of in the x direction if we're going at a constant speed. And here's a crucial part. We want to put one direction in the direction of the acceleration. And the acceleration is always toward the center. That's what centripetal means, toward the center. And so toward the center is down when the rider is at the top. Very crucial step there. Now we sum the forces in the y direction. It equals the mass times the acceleration. And this is a centripetal acceleration. And since we're given angular velocity, I'm using the angular velocity uh, version of centripetal acceleration omega squared over r. Should be able to show how that is derived from v squared over r. And we add up all the forces in the y direction. Uh, the weight is in the positive y direction. It's in the same direction as positive y. That's why it's so important to put your coordinate system on your free body diagram. And the normal force is in the negative direction, so it has a minus sign. And so mg minus n is the sum of the forces in the y direction. Solving for the normal force, you can uh, add n over here and subtract m omega squared from both sides. should be able to show it comes out to that. Then you can factor out the m if you want. And so you get 50 times 9.8 minus uh, 0.314 squared times the radius. And that comes out to 460 new 416 newtons. The weight of the person, mg, is 490 newtons. And so they feel lighter as they go over the top of the Ferris wheel. And that may agree with your experiences on Ferris wheels. What about at the bottom? How are you going to feel there? A free body diagram at first looks identical to this free body diagram. One crucial difference, though, what's the direction of the acceleration when we're at the bottom? It's always toward the center, and so toward the center now is up, and so we make up positive. So things at first look very similar. Some of the forces in the y equal ma, and we once again use omega squared r for the centripetal acceleration. But now the normal force is in the positive direction, and the weight is in the negative direction. It's down. And so it's minus mg equals m omega squared r. So when you solve for the normal force now, it's mg plus m omega squared r, whereas over here it was minus. And so you're going to feel heavier, right? And so putting in your numbers and solving, you get 564 newtons. And so you can try this one out. Uh, what would happen if they're spinning faster? Well, there's a limit, right? At what angular velocity would the rider lose contact with the seat at the top? And I'll give you a hint. At that point, the normal force would go to zero. If you spin it faster than that, the rider better be holding on because they will otherwise uh, go off in a parabola, which won't be too good uh, when they reach the ground. And so I'm going to give you the answer here in RPMs. Are you ready? Have you done this yourself? Pause the video. No cheating. Here comes the answer. Aha! I said no cheating. You didn't pause it. I'll give you one more chance. Here comes the answer. Good luck.